Hey everybody, welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let's read about the call stack. The way control flows through functions is somewhat involved. Let's take a closer look at it. Here is a simple program that makes a few function calls. Uh, now I've gone to our vocab list and I said that the call stack is the way that control flows through functions is involved. And we'll probably add more about that later, but the call stack is definitely something you're going to want to have in the back of your mind as an idea that you are at the very least aware of. So here's our function, we have function greet, takes a parameter of who, console logs hello, plus who, whatever the parameter was, or whatever argument gets passed when we call it. So here we have an actual parameter being passed called Harry, so we're going to greet Harry, it's going to say console log hello, plus Harry, and then a console log bye. So a run through this program goes roughly like this. The call to greet causes control to jump to the start of that function. So we're saying on line 4 when it says greet, that causes control to jump to the start of the function on line 2, which is to say it's going to console log hello plus who, Inside of that function, of course, we have the uh, value of Harry bound to the um, binding who. So the function calls console.log, which takes control, does its job, and then returns control to line two. Uh, there it reaches the end of the greet function, so it console.logs, and then it returns to here, then returns to line two, where it reaches the end of the greet function, so it returns to the place that called it, which is line four, so that's essentially here. The line after that calls console.log again, after that returns the program which is at end, which is its end. Uh, we could show the flow of control schematically like this. And let's try to have both of these in line so we can say not in function, which is essentially uh, you know just existing going down this way. Uh, in greet, which is to say here. Uh, after that it's not in anything. And then it's not in the and it's in greet again in console.log. Oh, um, my sincere apologies. So, so one of the things that I'm ignoring here is that the console.log function does something similar to what the call on line four does. So when console.log happens, it calls the console.log and then returns back to where the console.log happened. Uh, so we're in greet, we are in console.log, console.log ends, so we're in greet, we get to the end of the function, so we're not in the function. Then we're in the console.log, then we're not in the function again. Because the function has to jump back to the place that call did when it returns, the computer must remember the context from which the call happened. In one case, console.log has to return to the greet function when it's done. And that's going to be the end of this console.log. In the other case, it returns to the end of the program, because that's the last line of the program. The place where the computer stores this context is called the call stack. Every time a function is called, ooh, like it. So that's going to be a much better definition for us. So the place where computer stores this context is called the call stack. All right. So we've got a better definition for call stack. Call stack, the way the control flows through functions is involved. And what was our next definition? Uh, the place where the computer stores this context is called the call stack. So we're almost there. We don't have an entire definition yet. Uh, because the function returns to the end of the program. Okay, so because a function has to jump back to the place that called it when it returns, the computer must remember the context from which the call happened. That feels like a nice bridging statement. So the call stack, the way control flows through functions evolved, because a function has to jump back to the place that called it when it returns, the computer must remember the context from which the call happened. The place where the computer stores this context is the call stack. That seems like a reasonable definition. In one case, console.log has to return, oh no, we just did that. Uh, every time a function is called, the current context is stored on top of the stack. When a function returns, it removes the top context from the stack and uses that context to continue execution. Storing the stack requires space in computer's memory. When the stack grows too big, the computer will fail with messages like out of stack space or too much recursion. The following code illustrates this by asking the computer a really hard question that causes an infinite back and forth between two functions. Rather, it would be infinite if the computer had an infinite stack. As it is, we will run out of space or blow the stack. Uh, I wouldn't advise running this. Hopefully they have something built in here so it doesn't crash things, but this will obviously call uh, an infinite, will create an infinite loop. And, and we can think about this in terms of like the stack, right? So the stack is going to be the context where a function was called. And we had the, so we started with not in function, which is of course how we start. And we'll put a multi-line comment here and we'll just see if we can walk through this. So start with not in function, uh, and then we get into the, so we'll say in console.log, and then in console.log we say in chicken, and in chicken, we go into chicken and we see that we return eggs, so we say in 
egg. And then egg, we look in here and it tells us that we need to return chicken. So we're going to be in chicken, in egg, in chicken. And hopefully that gives a nice demonstration of how we're never going to end. It's just going to go back and forth between in chicken and in egg, unable to determine the answer to the question that bothers everybody since the beginning of time. Um, I think the Harry Potter answer to this is that a circle has no beginning. But that's neither here nor there again. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. The call stack is definitely something that's going to take a few uh, infinite loops and some time for you to get a complete understanding of, but this kind of demonstration where you write the call stack similar to this and similar to the way that it's been written here can be a very useful way to kind of visualize it. I've also seen people make programs inside of, or not programs, but demonstrations inside of something like an Excel or a Google Sheets using the cells as actual elements in the stack or creating kind of like a hierarchical relationship therein. So that's it for this, again, small section, which we're talking about a lot, so it makes kind of a long video, but hope you're enjoying them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.